I assume you're hysterical at that point. Uh, probably, I would be, yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. didn't mean that in a judgy kind right. of way. Oh, well, I meant I, I would be crazed <laughs> if something like this happened. This is the plaintiff, Joanne Harriman. She says she hired the defendant to be her handyman, paid him for a dishwasher install and a hot water tank. He did half the work, then tried to disappear into the clear blue sky. She had a plumber come out. The man was horrified by the defendant's work, and she later found out he lied about being licensed. Bottom line, she never should have trusted the crook and is now suing him for every penny of the $2,238 she's owed. This is the defendant, Kevin Smith. He says the plaintiff is simply not thinking right because when he was at her house doing work for her, she was smoking pot, drinking, and he thinks that has clouded her recollection of things. He asked her to stop since he's a recovering addict with 30 years being sober. She told him it was her house, so he got his tools and left. He went away and above for this woman, and he certainly doesn't owe her a dime. He's accused of not getting the job done. The defendant has filed a countersuit for $2,238 for harassment, slander, and false claims. All parties, please do ready. What you are about to witness is real. The participants are not actors. They are actual litigants with a case pending in civil court. Both parties have agreed to drop their claims and have their cases settled here before Judge Marilyn Millian in our forum, the People's Court. Be seated, come to order, please. Litigants have been sworn, Yana. Thank you, Douglas. Welcome, Joanne Harriman, you are suing Kevin Smith, your former handyman, for $2,238 in damages, representing the amounts you had to pay licensed plumbers and electricians to correct his work. Tell me what happened. On December 25th, Christmas Eve, my hot water... December 24th is Christmas Eve. December 25th is 25th. Christmas. 25th, okay. It was Christmas Day night. Uh, my hot water tank exploded f at the top. Why can't it happen on the 26th? <laughs> <laughs> right. Honest to God. Unfortunately, um, since it had come up through there, it had flooded the whole living space down there. Were you there when it happened? Oh, I was sleeping. And I called Kevin, and Kevin responded. Right. Immediately. He, he picked up the phone on the 26th. Right. Okay. And then yeah. you tell, you, I assume you're hysterical at that point. Uh, probably, I would be, yeah. I mean, I, I yeah. didn't mean that in a judgy kind right. of way. Oh, well, I mean, I, I would be crazed <laughs> if something like this happened. Well, right. yeah, because I was. Yeah. Everything then, got so soaked and wet. So you call him and you tell him, I need you, I need you right now, you need to help me. And so he does. What does he do? What did the two of you do? What we did was he um, looked at it and then we went to Lowe's and purchased um, a new hot water tank, and then he bought all these parts um, and tools that he needed to put the new piping on this uh, hybrid uh, hot water tank. Okay, and, and so how much did you spend at Lowe's that day? On that particular day, I spent $1,900. Okay, do you have the receipts from that day? Yes, I do. May I see them? Yes, sir. All right, so then what happens? Who cleaned out all the water? Uh, shop back. Okay, so you rented uh, a shop back at the Lowe's? No, I have a shop back. Oh, you own a shop back. Um, okay. There's a $1,900 one. Then we had to return and buy more pots okay. and plumbing Man, it tools. ended up becoming pretty expensive, right? Because yeah, at some point, the two of you part ways. What caused the parting of the ways? Um, because the last time I saw Kevin, he asked me for uh, five, uh, a, a prepayment. He had to go get his um, truck. And, uh, how registered. much did you did you prepay him? Yes, I prepaid him three hundred dollars. Right, but then how, then what happened? Why didn't he come? According to you, he didn't come back and finish a job. And according to you, that's why. Well, right. He he said that he would be back, and he never showed back. Okay. So I called them and left messages and I never got any response. So I went to the Hanson Police Department 
and told them what was going on, and he, they told me this is not a civil matter. And this to is go not a criminal matter. Criminal it's a civil matter. matter. It's a civil matter. Okay, right. so you never threw him off your property, and he never left your property mad about something. Okay. No. Now your story is different. You're saying you walked off the job. Yeah. Why? First off, I had pneumonia and the flu for six weeks, and I had walking pneumonia for two weeks, and I told her I was sick, that I would go up below, get a hot water tank, put it in, just so she would have water and she'd have to handle the rest. I also told her I had a friend that had a veteran's card that would save her 10% on a hot water tank. When we got the loaves, we were supposed to buy just a hot water tank. She ended up buying $2,800 worth of stuff. Okay, and... Was any of that tools that you needed in order to... Oh, yeah, some of it was tools, How copper much in piping. Tools? How much? About $38 worth of Hold tools. Hold on. Right, what is your profession? I'm a handyman, but at the same time, I had no contract with it, and I told her I was not licensed. I was only doing it so she could have water and hot water, take a shower until the holidays was over where she could hire somebody. I did put in a hot water tank, but I did told you her... I, what does put it in mean? Lay it there or install no, no, it? No, no, install it. And okay. I did. And did it yes. work? Yes, it did. So what happened? What was the reason you walked off the job? Because I asked her several times not to smoke pot in the house or drink while I was there. I was a recovering addict and, a, 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 and alcoholic. And she continually smoked How pot. How long have you been in recovery? I haven't had a drink in 30 years. I've been in re uh, uh, addict recovery for seven. You haven't had any drugs in seven? Yeah. Good for you. Congratulations. Thank you. And she kept smoking pot, never mind the She's cigarettes. She's smoking pot? I, yes, she does. Were you smoking marijuana in front of him and drinking in front of him? I think the night that Jeff came over, I did have a drink, and Jeff and I smoked a joint. Yes, we did. What parts did you take? When I installed the hot water tank, it was five feet of wire left from 25 feet. Out of a 10-foot piece of copper pipe, there was three feet of it left. That's what I took. There was a pair of wire cutters. There was a pipe cutter, some saw. Why do you get to take the wire cutters and the pipe cutters and all well, that? I said to her at Lowe's, when I buy these tools, I'm going to keep them so I have them for other jobs, which she had. I have a question for you. Did you ever hire somebody else to finish the job? Yes, I did. You paid the plumber six eighty five dollars according to your lawsuit, yes or no? Uh, yes. You, co you paid an electrician 600 according to your lawsuit, yes or no? I had to pay him because there was a lot of code violations for the electrical. This, I have a letter from Gary Young. Um, the, who is the inspector? Who is the town. OK, um, and he's not happy with you. OK, did he inspector. contact you? No, he didn't. OK, but see, there's two things going on here. You may not have the licenses, and she may know that you don't have the licenses, so you're going to charge less money. And people know that when they hire a handyman. <laughs> you know the word handyman means he's handy, and not that he's a plumber and an electrician, please. All right, that's why she hired you. But that doesn't give you a, a, you know, a license, pardon the pun, to just do things in a bad and unsafe way, which is what the inspector says. All right, so let's talk about what you ended up having to do. You ended up having, a, a, and, and once you get the city involved, now everybody's got to be licensed and file permits and everything else, right? Well, and, that's what I found, right? The code oh, yeah. changed. All right, so tell me. Let me see the letter from the inspector, because the inspector actually went out there and listed everything that had been done incorrectly. Uh, several violations of the Commonwealth's plumbing codes and various live wires were left hanging in the basement. You can't do that. There were several other code violations. Of note, the electric hot water heater had no vacuum valve and no drip leg on the relief valve was present. Upon reviewing the receipt, it appeared that Mr. Smith bought set, wow, this inspector really chummied up to you. Because it's kind of like, I usually inspectors are really hands off and just the facts, ma'am. And he's, it looked like he was fraudulently using a credit card. I reviewed the receipt, and there's several items that had no relevant bearing to the project being attempted. With respect to Mr. Smith's demeanor, I was told he was aggressive and that vulgarity, vulgarity was prevalent. Lastly, I followed up and found out he has no license and good standing. All right. All right, now on your counterclaim, 
So we've gone over the labor, the plumbing parts, the plumber and the electrician. Now I want to hear about your counterclaim. According to you, she harassed you, slandered you, and made false claims. Mm -hmm. um, other than leaving messages showing her frustration and she saying nasty things. She showed up at thing. my house while I was in bed sick. I, I, I harassed my girlfriend, said she wanted me to the door. She wanted me over the house now. Um, she told two friends of mine that I killed my ex-wife that actually That what? That I had killed my ex-wife that had passed your away. Yes, she had died of a suicide, and she was telling people that I killed her. Welcome back to the People's Court. Harvey Levin here. So, would you hire a non-licensed uh, handyman to do electrical work in your house? Absolutely not. Why? Well, for a couple of reasons. Um, Give me the best one. The best reason is that if anything ever happens, um, uh, there's no license with the contractor. Okay, that actually is a good point, but they are a lot cheaper, right? Yes, a lot cheaper, and I would hire. Because but like what about the danger here? They, they weren't necessarily, they didn't have to pass a test. Well, years of experience, maybe lots of uh, elbow, uh, okay. elbow uh, experience. You're going to be the uh, tiebreaker here. I would ask my landlord because I'm a renter. Oh, okay. That's You just blocked me on that one. Right. Okay, going inside the courtroom. Did you tell people he killed his wife? No. Did you tell people he drove her to kill herself, or did you say something nasty like that? Or? No. What, do you have any evidence that she did no, that? No, I don't. I would have, but I, nobody could make it here today, Your Honor. Okay. I'm sorry. So go on. Um, Jeff, she accused Jeff and I on one of the messages that we sell drugs. She, you know, I, I, it's... And she threatened to go to the police and tell them that we sell drugs, like a way to coerce me into going back. If I don't, she's going to turn me into the police because she knows I have my past history. So, it, you know, it's just the, the, the coercion, the, the harassing phone calls, the whole nine yards. She just wouldn't stop. Okay. Um, that doesn't amount to no, what... No, it doesn't. Yeah, it's annoying, mm -hmm. and it's um, right. uh, distasteful, but it doesn't amount to a $2,238 case, but neither does her claim. All right, so let's go over what I find that... You, on your counterclaim, zero. None of us ever should undertake to do a job that we're not completely qualified to do. So I am going to order the following. I'm going to order you to repay the amount of the tools that you have admitted that you took. That's 88.58. I'm going to order you to pay what it costs to do this right with a plumber, which is 685. And I'm going to order you to pay what it costs to do this right with an electrician, which was an additional 600. That's a total of $1,373.58. And you also want to be able to get the 300 that you paid him back, but how can you get both that and everything you paid a plumber and an electrician to do it right? You can't get both, because then you have absolutely free plumbing and wiring and installation of your appliances, and you don't get that. You get the benefit of your bargain. If you paid him to install it and he did it wrong and you gotta pay somebody a bunch of money, then you got that bunch of money are your, is your damages. If you get the bunch of money and you get the money you paid him, then woo -hoo, let's all go to court, because that way none of us have to pay for inst installing appliances. So you don't also get the 300, you get this total, $1,373.58, verdict for the plaintiff on the defendant's counterclaim zero. Well, Kevin Smith, the defendant's on his way out of the courtroom. Right. Kevin, the judge just said you have to pay what she had to pay the electrician yep. and the plumber, right? Yep. 1300 and some odd dollars. That's, that's what I get for helping a friend. That's what you get for helping, yeah. That's right. So what have you learned from all of this? Don't help a friend. <laughs> I mean, obviously, you knew you weren't qualified to yes. do it. Right? I mean, yes, you weren't I was just trying to help her temporarily. You are just she trying got to keep her off there. your back, right? Yep. Well... I hope when somebody asks you to do something like this again, involving plumbing or electricity, yep. you'll stay away from it. You're right, I will. Okay, congratulations. Bye -bye. Good luck you've learned. Thank it's you that way. <laughs> now here comes Ms. Harriman. I, I think the bottom line here, is everything working now? Mm, well, no? yes, I as see. of two weeks ago, had I've it. had a nightmare, and I'm glad now I can go to the, the town inspector, and Kevin is facing $10,000 fine and two and a half years in prison because he did. He bought enough fittings for for and the... elbows for six uh, hot water well, tanks. Let's, so let's whatever, leave it doesn't but matter. He didn't know what he was buying. He didn't know oh, what he, he had to buy. You now, know what? You know, the bottom line here is you should have gone... 
to get a qualified person in the very beginning. Well, that you was know your what? Fault. I found out he you let know? his his handyman license, the only one, expire. Okay, after all this in Sorry investigation. He wasn't a plumber, he wasn't an electrician, and that's Well, he mean. lied, and he's a liar, thief, and I'm glad that this whole thing is over so I can put away my paperwork, and good luck to him. Good luck to you. Yes, okay, thank good. you. Okay, fine. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. <laughs> Have a good day. Wow, okay. Harvey? Okay, look, I mean, I know it's a lot cheaper, but I got to tell you, there are a million reasons why you want to hire a licensed contractor, not the least of which is what this lady said, which is that they put a bond up when they get a license and you have something to go against if they cause damage. That will do it for this case. Litigants for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. These are the plaintiffs. Fuima, Fatina, Rogers, Banks, and Darrell Banks. Fuima says she and her husband rented an apartment from the defendant, and the guy's trying to pull a fast one on them by not returning all of their security on trumped-up damages. That's right. The defendant is lying through his teeth about imaginary damages. They're not going to let the likes of him get away with stealing their money and are suing him for the $1,200 they're owed. This is the defendant, Charles Timmons. He says the plaintiffs cracked the sink in the bathroom doing who knows what in there together. But hey, that's not against the law. In addition, he had to do extensive renovations to the floors and walls. He has the receipts to prove it, and he has every right to withhold what he did. He's accused of holding on tight to money's owed. All parties, please use your right hand. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiffs rented an apartment from the defendant, and they say that he literally stole from them. But the defendant says the plaintiffs cracked the sink, and it seems he knows exactly what they were doing when it broke. It's the case of Sexy Sinky. Thank you, Douglas. Okay, Fuima Fatina Rogers Banks and Daryl Banks, you are suing Charles Timmons, your former landlord, for the return of $1,200 in security deposit plus interest that you say he owes you. Yes. All right, tell me what happened. In May of 2014, we moved into Charles Timmons' uh, apart department that he was renting out there. Um, How many units are there? There are three units. We moved out in December 25th of 2016. After we vacated, we t I took pictures of the apartment. Were you in the middle of a lease or no? No. Okay. You the just, lease was up. Okay. So when you left, did you take pictures, you said? Yes. These are the move-out pictures. Gotcha. So these are the pictures that you took of the place when you Moved left. out. That's funny. Your pictures are actually physically damaged. Not, not the, Oh, they scratched. Like, yeah, they're all scratched up. What happened to your pictures? I printed them out at work, so that's how they came out. And on. what? <laughs> then what? Then you attack them? Because when you're trying to show how nice a place looks, I don't usually get pictures where the physical picture's damaged as opposed to the items, you know? It's kind of funny. All right, so according to you, when you left, you know that there was a crack in the sink. Yes. yes. And how'd the crack get there? I was trying to kill a bug. Really hard. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a picture of the damage to the sink? Yes. Let me see that. Do you have any proof of what a sink costs so that I know that what you deducted was adequate? Um, yes, I, I did, because I was trying to yeah. help things along. Yeah. So I did get a, as, some estimates from Home Depot. Okay. That's a pretty pretty crap. <laughs> How did you think that got there? You know, I, I'm, oh, I can't speculate, Your Honor, but... Um... Oh, but you have. <laughs> <laughs> I you just don't want to speculate now in front of me, but in your, in your answer to the complaint, you're like, well, what are they doing on there? That Somebody's sitting on that sink doing something. I don't know what they're doing, but I mean, they're well, sitting the on the evidence. sink. Let me just ask you, when you, they had a security deposit, which was $1,200? Yes. All right, and uh, did you return any of it? No, uh, Your Honor, a couple things. Um, Due to a little bit of resource constraints, and I set the expectations with them, uh, the project to re renovate and to get estimates. And wait, 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 neither they nor I care if you're renovating the place. Well, the only thing that matters is did they damage the place? Well, yes. That's so that's what I need to know. Right. That's, what right. evidence do you have that they damaged the place and that therefore you'd be able to keep the entire security deposit? Tell me about it. Uh, pictures are right here. The okay. floors had to be redone. 
The um, floors had to be redone. Yeah. So what was wrong with the floors? They're right here in the pictures. Okay. So just the basic wear and tear, Your Honor. Yeah, no, basic um, wear and tear doesn't get, you, you don't get to keep a security deposit over basic wear and no, tear. And, That's and exactly was, what, and, and that is specifically what you don't get to keep it for. What is wrong with these floors? What's all that white stuff? That looks like it's just dirt. Is that just dirt? I, it, quite possibly, Your Honor. Okay, so let's picture. go to the next yeah. picture. Now that's the floor yes. separating and shifting. That how is that? How could that ever be a tenant's fault? Your Honor, well, I mean, what they had you, a lot of What do you think the tenants did to separate one plank from another? Your Honor, you know, they had a lot of furniture in that in the apartment, and. Um, I never said, no, you're not getting it back. Well, I never said that. They had to sue you for it. Well, I and notified you're, and you're, them. And you're saying things like, well, let's see how much this renovation cost me. It's not up to them to help you renovate it for the next tenant. It's, they have to pay for everything they did wrong to it minus normal wear and tear. That's the only thing they don't have to pay for, the phrase normal wear and tear. Now, if the floors are separating, which I see what you're saying, and that, that can happen, I've had that happen in houses in Florida, but that's not something that they would have to pay for unless it's something that they did. So if you have a cash flow problem, that's your issue. That's not their issue, you know what I'm saying? Okay. Yeah. Uh, All right, so what other, other pictures of damage do you have? I, I got you on the sink. And you had, you had confessed to another issue. There was a sink, and what else that you were... Oh, one of the doors came off the hinges. So how much did you deduct for that? From well, when I s took the picture at Home Depot, that same door was literally $40. It was 38 and change. And what about uh, installing the door? The door, it only takes... Uh, oh, good. Why didn't you just change it then? <laughs> uh, right? Uh, Since it's only 40 bucks and it takes nothing, why didn't you just replace uh, it? So do landlords typically screw over tenants when it comes to returning security. Yes, they do. Why do you say? I've experienced it firsthand. Uh, you need something fixed, you ask for them to fix it, and they'll wait until you're leaving to tell you that it's an issue that you were supposed to fix and then keep your deposit. Okay, well that's a specific case. Do you think generally they screw you over? I never had an experience like that because I own a house. God, I'm having no luck here. Okay, well you're a renter, so I might as well go back to you. Do they screw you over or not? No, they don't. I think that they give you your security deposit back if you didn't do anything to the house. Okay, that sounds so reasonable. Okay, going inside the card room. Your demand was for 900 of the 1200, right? Yes. Okay. Your response came a little bit late in the game. I mean, it came like a month and a half or so later when you were assessing how much everything was costing you. But what did you do to the place? It's all right here. Replace floors in front bedroom, living room, side bedroom, and back bedroom. Install tow molding in all rooms. Why would they have to pay for that? That's... Right. Install new smoke detectors. Did they steal the old ones? They did something with them. They weren't there. They weren't there. Did you take the smoke detectors? No. no. Did you detach the smoke detectors and stick them somewhere because they were annoying you? No. That's usually what happens. <laughs> Install happen. new light fixture in kitchen, back, si back and side bedroom. So you're renovating all the light fixtures, but what did they do to them? Why did they have to pay for that? Okay, install 30-inch vanity sink top, because that costs money. Besides buying the sink top, unless you're going to replace the sink top, which I noticed you didn't do, that costs money. All right. Change the locks on the front and the rear door. Is that something they did wrong, or are you just as a precaution you do that? Precaution. Yeah, they, they don't have to pay for that. Clean entire apartment fridge and stove. I saw the pictures. Their, their apartment was pretty clean. What do you feel wasn't clean? Um, Your Honor, as far as w when we're doing the work, well, the that's the thing. You're paying this guy to do the work, and you're confusing the, yourself with them. They are not the landlord. If you're paying somebody to upkeep the place because otherwise you think it will be hard for you to re-rent, that's on you. Re-grout, shower and tub area. What did they do to the grout? Cock the windows and doors. You should be doing that. And you don't have an itemized bill, so if I don't end up... It's always good when you come to court as a landlord to have an itemized bill, because what if the judge doesn't agree with everything you're asking for, which clearly I'm not? Mm -hmm. Then I don't know how much each thing is, and I just got to kind of spitball it in my head. You understand? So it would be better always to have an itemized bill. Douglas, what time is it? Time for a little rough justice. That's right. <laughs> Based on the damages that I think you should be responsible for and those that I don't think you should be responsible for, I am finding in uh, 
your favor, not in the total amount that you're looking for, but in the amount of $650 mm -hmm. plus prejudgment statutory interest from the time that it was owed that you left. Okay? okay. That's my judgment. Good luck, folks. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Well, the plaintiffs are going to get it back a little bit over a half of the amount they were suing for, $650, I think. Uh, what do you think? You know, um, I put a lot into it. You, and, you didn't uh, have enough evidence, you know? If you'd had more receipts, well, it would have been a huge help to you. Yeah, I had a lot of receipts in there, but, you know, it is what it is. It is. <laughs> Sorry, but you got to pay it. Okay? Yeah. Thank you very much. Yep. You must sign a few documents out there. So the plaintiffs recover a little over half, 650 of what they were seeking, and then plus a little bit of interest, so a little bit over half what you were seeking. You okay with that? I'm well okay with that. It's interesting. You showed pictures. The apartment looked really pretty, and then he showed pictures, and they showed all the bad things, you know? So your pictures didn't match each other. But anyway, so be it. You all right now? We okay. Okay, you all right? Good. Okay, thank, thank you very much. You. Thank you. Okay. Harvey? Okay, you know, Doug, you should know that in a lot of states, if a landlord has no basis for holding a security deposit, they can actually retain two and sometimes three times, excuse me, they have to pay two and three times the amount that is wrongfully withheld. And that will do it for this case, litigants, for the next case on the way into the courtroom right now. This is the plaintiff, Leonizio Gonzalez. He says he bought a used car from the defendant, and there's something wrong with the car, and the unscrupulous defendant refuses to fix it even though he promised he would. He's not about to play around with this guy, so he's not going to take the law into his own hands. He's going to take him to court for the $5,675.36 he's definitely owed. This is the defendant, Victor. He says the plaintiff purchased the car with a 30-day 50-50 warranty. He would pay 50% and the plaintiff would pay the other 50% if anything went wrong with it in the first 30 days. Then the guy goes straight to the attorney general with a so-called complaint and never brought anything to his attention. He sold over 10,000 cars in 21 years of business and he's never seen anything like this. Oh, him? No way. He's accused of playing around with a customer. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case in the docket, the plaintiff bought a car from the defendant. It got wonky, and the defendant won't fix it. But the defendant says the plaintiff had a warranty, but didn't follow the drill. It's the case of, I got drilled. Thank you. You're Leonizio welcome. Gonzalez, yes. you are suing the auto dealership owned by Victor. That's how you want us to refer to you, Victor, and not mention the name of the auto dealership. For $5,675.36 in damages um, that you say you have incurred as a result of the car that they sold you. You purchased a vehicle from the defendant, yes. correct? And what vehicle was that? Okay, it was a 2005 Kia Sedona. Okay, V6 wagon. Yes. All right. And now, how much were you, did you, what was the purchase price? Okay, the purchase price, when I talked to them on the phone, was $3,000. Okay, and then what happens when you get there? When I get there, it's $3,900. Okay, well, is that because you were financing it? I had to finance it. Well, if you had to finance it, don't... Is it 3900 because you had to finance well, it? Well, I don't really know because Well, if a online, car's 3000 and you're not, you don't have the 3000 in your pocket to hand over, right. it's going to cost you money to borrow it from somewhere. Exactly. Right. That's why it's... Yes. Okay. Can see, I have you stop with the rustling of the papers? It, it was confusing because online it said the payments would be like $68 a month. And then what happened when you got there? Well, I, I, before I got there, we spoke on the phone, and, and he, said, he told me it would be like one twenty-six. Oh, so you were fine with that because you obviously no, went over I wasn't there. No, fine with then that. Then don't go. Why yeah, did you well, go? Yeah, well, I told him I couldn't afford it. So, so that was he it. Asked then me, why am I what here? What could you afford? Okay. And I told him anywhere from ninety to hundred dollars because I thought it would be sixty-eight. So you know, I let it go. They were they would see what he said. He would see what kind of deal he could work out for me. Okay. At the end of the day, when you're there and you negotiate the deal, what's the deal you negotiate? Okay, this is the deal. I'm thinking I get there, the whole deal I No, no, what I was signed. the deal? Just answer what the deal was. The deal was... Can I see the bill of sale? $3,900 right, at and your payments? 125 
a month okay, for 30 so months. If that wasn't what you wanted, why did you buy it? Oh, no. I, I, you were fine with it. I was fine with okay, it. Okay, so what happens? You take the car and what I goes go, wrong? I get in the van and I see the check engine light on. I asked the guy about it. Oh, you drive it around for a few it'll go out. If it doesn't, we'll take care of it. Is that in writing? I don't think so. Okay. Because what is in writing is that you have a used car warranty as detailed in a separate document. Where's the separate document, please? Detailed in separate document? Yeah, the warranty. That's it. And I want the court to look at this too, please. Uh, it's another form Limited that warranty. Signed. The dealer will pay 50% of labor and 50% of the parts of the covered systems that fail during the warranty period. Ask the dealer for a copy of the warranty document for a full explanation of warranty coverage. May I now have the rest of the document, the full explanation of warranty coverage? Everything is covered. Okay, 50 -50. that works for me. All right, yes. so there's no exclusions on the warranty? No. Okay. Everything 50-50 okay, so the first time. Okay, so now what happens? When is the first time something goes wrong? Uh, I drove it for 100 miles. The light was still on. I called the dealership. Bring it in. We'll take care of it. Finally, when I brought it in, they put it on a machine. The mechanic said it's two codes. Two codes come up. Codes. Codes for whatever the problem mm -hmm. is. And... He fixed a sensor. He took a sensor out of one Kia, put it in my Kia. I drove away. Did, was two the light days, off? Yeah. Two and days later, the light's back on. Okay. I call him up. I said, look, there's a problem. The light's back on. Bring it back in. November 11th, I brought it back in. He said he put it on the machine. He said there's a cold. He told me there's a door for the exhaust system that's stuck open that we have to order from the dealer. So he says, we'll order the part. He said, I'll let the dealer know to order the part. I said, when would it be here? Monday. Fine. I go away. Monday, I come back. He tells me, I'm going to tell you. Well, you probably don't want to hear exactly what he said. But he told me. I told him. He told me he's not ordering anything unless you pay for half of everything. But that's your warranty. I'm looking at it. This is your signature. Your warranty is for half of everything. You have a 50-50 warranty. After the 30 days. You have a warranty that covers, it lasts 30 days or 1,000 miles, right. whichever comes first. And for those 30 days, it's 50-50. After that, you're on your own. It's a used car. This After is the, the 30 days, I understand that. Right, so you're within the 30 days. Right. Right. So you don't get 50-50 after the 30 days. You're misinterpreting this. The duration of your limited warranty is 30 days. That's how long the warranty is. And the type of warranty you have is a 50-50 warranty. You're supposed to pay half the stuff. That's what this says. In the first 30 days? Yes, in the okay. first 30 uh, days. I get... Only in the first 30 days. After that, you don't have to pay 50%. You okay. have to pay 100%. I understand what you're saying. Girl. Okay. I so what exactly happened what here? So have you now. gotten it fixed or no? No, I just... Okay, uh... why are you suing for 5000 something dollars? Okay, so I have a question. I need an honest answer. Uh, you ever own or lease a car? Yes. Okay. Have you ever read the warranty when you buy it? Or lease it? No. Have you, do you own or lease a car? I do. Have you ever read the warranty when you uh, bought it or leased it? I have not. Own or lease a car? Lease. Ever read the warranty? No. Anybody understand why it's important to read the warranty? Uh, yeah, it's saying what your legal obligations are and... Um... Kind of dumb not to, right? Uh, yeah. Have you ever read it? No. Oh, there you go. Going inside the courtroom. <laughs> There's an exhaust leak in the car and these mechanics shops in the in the area no one has a smoke machine but the dealerships so i had to contact a dealership take it to the dealership get it on that smoke machine for three hours to find out exactly what it's going to take to get this check engine light off because i can't get it to pass inspection with a check engine light on this is the reason i brought the case to court because why should I have what something happened I can't when you get? Took it, well, yeah, but just a second. And what happened when you took it to Kia? They Do you have it, a report from them? I can give it to you right here, Your Honor. No problem. Here we are, sir. You're welcome. Okay. So they come up with a bill. Uh, they're suggesting you replace the fuel tank because there's some rust on the fuel tank at the, to the tune of $3,000. 
All right, and then I recommend replacing throttle body assembly. What is that? It's uh, some computer that calculates how much gas and how much air to throw to the engine. To the tune so of $1,000. Yeah. Okay, but you got all of this March 20th, exactly. and your warranty expired November 14th. Yes. So that was the day they were supposed to get me the so-called door. Yeah, but he had the nerve to say, <laughs> I'll order it when you pay 50%. And you misread your warranty. That is what, what, the, what they have to do. Understood. You pay 50, they pay 50. All Understood. right, so at that time, what was your mechanic telling him the problem was? What yeah, were they saying gets, the problem? It gets better. I no, what, I, I don't care how much it better gets it gets better. after 30 days. I only have to decide how good it no. got in the 30 days. So here's my question to you. In the 30 days, when the mechanic looked at it, what was it he said you had to pay 50% of? Do we have that mechanic's this, report? This door. Do we have the mechanics report from then? No, honestly. You're getting uh, sued, I, I you're suing, aware. and nobody has that mechanics report. That's I wasn't mechanic. aware of this problem at all. Okay, anything. but you were aware when you got sued, right? Just in the last And no one just woke days. you outside and you magically found yourself at the people's court, right? Just in the last 10 days. Okay, 10 days is enough to walk across the street. Why don't you have that mechanics report about what I, happened then? I didn't think I have to even deal with that because the same reason that the warranty is only 30 days. Right, and but he did bring you a problem within the 30 days. But within the 30 days, they fixed the problem. And since then, we never heard about nothing until Oh, he this... says the second time he brought it in, the first time you guys just did whatever and didn't charge it. And didn't the even charge The second him. time was within the 30 days. Because I don't know about any second time. That's course, the thing. No, no, you do know because you know that you, your answer to somebody was he's got to pay 50%. Which is only in the first 30 days. Within my network employees, you know, I have about 10 employees that work in. So he was dealing with one of my customers. I will fire my employees if they, don't, if they mistreat the customer. But I want to bring everything back to the beginning. You know, the, 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 the beast that we're dealing with is people that does not have credit to buy cars and they just begging to put themselves in something. I even have a form that okay, is signed that, on Okay, but that it. also, does, I mean, I understand. Listen, I get it because their credit doesn't allow them to be in a car or because they have zero to put down or whatever it is. So I understand that. You had a trade-in in this case. But what you didn't have was a good understanding of your warranty. But it's in black and white right here. I can't say that's because they were fuzzy. I have to look at it and say, wow, he really just didn't understand that. So you had 30 days to bring them a problem and 30 days to have this warranty covered. And then when you go there, instead of having the problem covered, what you do is say, I'm not paying a penny because that's only in the first 30 days. After the 30 days, my warranty gets better, but that's not how it works. Honor, I, I, I didn't say when you that buy a used car, 30th, it's an as-is sale. Unless day. you have a warranty, which you do, and then it has to be what the warranty says. And you didn't abide by the warranty, so now what? Now what are we going to do? Now you've taken it to a Kia dealership a week before trial who tells you your car that is worth a thousand something needs five thousand dollars worth of repairs. You think I'm going to make this man pay you that? No, I, I know you're not. <laughs> your Honor, Your Honor. No, but this is the thing. <laughs> This is the thing, Your Honor. When I purchased the car, I gave him my car, which he gave me $1,000 for. Right. I also maxed out a credit card for $500. All right, but look, that, none of that matters. The only thing that matters to me is your contract. I didn't sign this. The two of you did, okay? What does the contract say? The contract says that your warranty only lasts 30 days. That's what the contract says, 30 okay. days, and that it's 50-50. That right. means that anything that happens in the first 30 days that you bring to their attention, they have to pay half of. Okay. But you didn't avail yourself of that because you misread it. And then you don't have $5,000 in damages, which is what you're suing for today, until a week ago when you brought it into Kia. And I can explain that. No, I don't need you to explain that. I just right, need to right. rule. It took me so long to do but that. But I just need to rule based on what's here. Understood. So based on what's here, I have no choice. This is your signature. This is your warranty. And my ruling is for the defendant. Thank you. Well, the plaintiff fails to prevail in this case. Mr. Yeah. Gonzalez, you read the warranty wrong, obviously. Yes, apparently I did, but I thought under good faith I would get it done. But they, you know, they ran me around. I brought the problem to them before the 30 days, so what can you do? But it wasn't that problem that you subsequently got, you know, defined for you just five days ago. Yeah, but so no, no, problem. that problem was the whole time the, the check engine the light was on. It's no such thing as an installed door. Well... <laughs> the bottom line is a chance to you couldn't it prevail all. here. I'm really right. sorry that's, for you, okay? Yeah. And next okay. time, read the warranty a little more carefully. Right.
Gotcha. Okay? Thanks. Good luck. All righty. Thank you very much. Victor, the uh, defendants come out of the courtroom. This kind of thing happen very often? No. I've been in business for 21 years, yeah. and this is the first time I come to court. I want the experience. I usually like to fix the problem with the people. Before you get to court, I buy the car back if there is a problem. I wasn't aware of this problem. Yeah. If I did, I would have bought the car a long time really? ago. Really? Okay. But the court did this job, and I appreciate the All system. Right. Thank you very much. Sure. What? What? You, you brought your backpack to court. You, you look like you're going camping. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, I did. Okay. I, I had to get some, <laughs> some paperwork. Right. Thank you very much. Okay. Sure. Harvey pays to read warranties, right? Okay. I mean, these guys are not... Uh, unique. Most people don't read these warranties, but the fact is you should. So even if you get this really thick document, I gotta tell you, just at least isolate the part that says warranty, especially if it's a used car, to know exactly what you're getting into. Don't text and drive. The People's Court is a Ralph Edwards Stu Billet production.